After a week-long delay, the PlayStation 5 reveal event finally happened. And what an event it was. Not only did we learn about so many awesome games that are coming to the PS5, but we finally got our first look at the design of the console, and it's just gorgeous. So let's get into everything we learned from Sony's event right now. While it was the games that were at the forefront of the presentation, Sony ended with a bang by revealing the interesting design of the PS5. It literally came out of nowhere, so that's where we'll start. As expected, the console has a similar white and black two-tone color scheme to the DualSense controller, and even blue lighting. But it was the rest of the console that caught us by surprise. The PS5 design is unlike anything we've seen from a console. It looks very futuristic and incredibly curvy. We honestly really dig the bold design choice by Sony as it shows that they're not afraid to take risks and think outside the box. But Sony wasn't finished, as they let us know that there will be two versions of the PS5. There's the standard PS5 that comes with a 4K Blu-ray drive and the PS5 Digital Edition without a drive. We honestly prefer the design of the Digital Edition more, since it looks thinner and is completely symmetrical. That being said, it's amazing that Sony is giving us the option of having a disc drive in the console, and we expect the Digital Edition to be cheaper than the standard PS5. But no one even mentioned the word price during the entire event, so we'll learn about that at a later date. If you're worried about whether or not the console could be placed horizontally since its sides are curved, well, you definitely can place it horizontally. You just need to use a stand. Supposedly, the official stand by Sony will work for either orientation, so you could use it to place the console vertically as well. The PS5 also has two ports on the front, one for USB-C and one for USB-A. As for the vents, it looks like they're at the back of the console and on top. Nothing really shocking there, as that's usually where consoles and even PCs tend to place their vents. We're curious as to how loud the PS5's fan is going to get, but we'll probably only figure that out once the console is officially released. We got a better look at the DualSense controller during the event as well, and we finally got to see the 3.5mm headphone jack at the bottom of it. So all of our fears have now gone away. Sony even let us know about a few accessories that'll be available alongside the PS5, including a new headset, remote control, camera, and DualSense charging station. But like we said earlier, the presentation mainly focused on the games, and there were some great gameplay trailers shown throughout the event. Immediately, we learned that GTA 5 is going to be coming to the PlayStation 5 in the second half of 2021, and that PS5 owners can get the standalone GTA Online for free if it's claimed within three months of the game's launch. Well, alongside a PS Plus account, but that's just par for the course. That was hardly the most important news of the day, though, as we learned about plenty of exclusive games coming to PS5. We also learned that a sequel to Insomniac's Marvel's Spider-Man will be released during the holiday season of 2020 called Spider-Man Miles Morales. Yep, it'll be another great Spider-Man story, but this time starring Miles Morales instead of Peter Parker. And it's most likely going to be a launch title for the PS5. Gran Turismo 7 is also going to be released for PS5 with an emphasis on competitive play and a revamped campaign mode. No release date was mentioned, though. One of the best gameplay demos had to be Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. It really showcased the power of that solid-state drive as Ratchet and Clank are traveling through a bunch of different worlds with pretty much instant loading times. It's clear from the gameplay demo that the game will be running very smoothly, as it was so quick to go in and out of menus. We later saw gameplay of Sackboy, a big adventure, and it looks to bring a much-needed change to the Little Big Planet series. It seems to be a fully 3D spin-off that looks incredibly detailed and must be so fun to play with three other friends. Surprisingly, we also learned that a remake of 2009's hit game Demon's Souls will be released on PS5. Yeah, it's finally back. For those of you who don't know, Demon's Souls is actually the first game in the incredibly difficult Souls series. Another exclusive game we learned about was Horizon Forbidden West, a game we've been hearing rumors about for what feels like forever. It's the sequel to one of the best PS4 exclusives. Honestly, it was probably the best-looking trailer out of all of them. It's a really highly anticipated game that we're sure is going to be amazing on PS5. We also saw gameplay for Deathloop, a new first-person shooter game by Bethesda. It's got some interesting movement and gaming mechanics. If you die, it loops you back to the beginning for another try. You're essentially stuck in a time loop with a rival assassin. We even saw trailers for Godfall and Square Enix's upcoming game, Project Athea. 
As for the other gameplay trailers we saw, we had Stray, Returnal, Destruction All-Stars, Kena Bridge of Spirits, Goodbye Volcano High, Oddworld Soulstorm, Ghostwire Tokyo, Jet the Far Shore, Solar Ash, Hitman 3, Astro's Playroom, Little Devil Inside, NBA 2K21, Bug Snacks, Pragmata, and Resident Evil 8 Village, which looks... Oh, it just looks great. Whew, that was a long list. All in all, it was a solid event, and we're more excited than ever for the future of gaming. And that's everything we learned from the PS5 reveal event. Did you enjoy the event? Are you happy with the design of the PS5? What games are you most interested in? Let us know in the comments section down below, and don't forget to subscribe to The Gamer for more gaming videos. As always, thanks a lot for watching.